good morning children in your previous class you have studied about the force on a current carrying conductor in a magnetic field and also about the fleming's left hand rule you just recall it children according to fleming's left hand rule when you stretch the thumb fourth finger and middle finger of your left hand such that they are mutually perpendicular to each other if the first finger points in the direction of the magnetic field and the second finger in the direction of current then the thumb will point in the direction of the motion or the force acting on the conductor see children during summer afternoon when you come from outside into your room what is the first thing you will do children you will switch on the fan because you need to cool down here see have you observed the fan children the fan starts rotating when you switch on the fan so the moment you switch on the fan it starts rotating so have you ever wondered that what happens when you open that and what happens when you open the switch why does the fan rotate now you can say that it has a motor inside that makes it rotate but what is going inside the motor that makes the fan rotate in this class we will try to answer all these questions regarding that how does a motor works and how it is made see children in the previous class while studying about the force on a current carrying conductor in a magnetic field we saw that when a conductor was placed in a magnetic field it experienced a force when the current is switched on we know that and today we will study about the electric motor see children an electric motor it is a rotating device that converts the electrical energy into the mechanical energy an electric motor is a rotating device that converts the electrical energy into the mechanical energy you have studied already about the electrical energy electrical energy it is generated by the movement of the electrons from one point to another electrical energy it can be either due to the kinetic energy or potential energy and mechanical energy it is the sum of the both potential energy and the kinetic energy see children this electric motor it is used as an important component in electric fans refrigerators mixers washing machines computers mp3 players etc and see children today we will discuss about the how the electric motor works an electric motor see children it has been shown in the figure here it consists of a rectangular coil a b c d see the construction here a b c d it is a rectangular coil of a insulated copper wire it is a rectangular coil made up of a insulated copper wire insulated means the material that is used to stop the passage of electricity the coil is placed between the two poles of a magnetic field such that the arm ab and cd are perpendicular to the direction of the magnetic field see children here this coil ab cd this is placed between the two poles of a magnetic field it is placed between the see here children north and south pole it is placed between the two poles of the magnetic field such that the arm ab arm ab and arm cd these are perpendicular to the direction of the magnetic field see children always the magnetic field exerts from north pole to south pole here and so the arm ab and arm cd they are perpendicular to the 
direction of the magnetic field. Next, the ends of the coil are connected to the two house here. See children, the ends of the rectangular coil here. The ends of the coil, these are connected to the two house that is P and Q. See here children, P and Q here. These are the two house of a split ring. Two house of a split rings. These are two split rings and the inner sides of these house. See children, the inner sides of these house, they are insulated. These are insulated so that the electricity will not pass through it. They are insulated and attached to an axle. This is the axle children. Axle, axle means it is a rod. Fixed or a, it may be rotating through a center of a wheel. And here... These split rings, these are here the P and Q of a, these are P and Q, two house of a split ring and the inner sides of these house are insulated and they are attached to an axle here. These split rings, these are attached to an axle and the external conducting edges, see here children, the external conducting edges of P and Q, they touch the two conducting stationary brushes. See here children, these external conducting edges, these are P and Q, they touch the two conducting stationary brushes. See here children, they touch the two conducting stationary brushes X and Y. See here children, these touch to the two conducting Stationary brushes here X and Y are the two conducting stationary brushes and the external ed conducting edges of P and Q they touch the two conducting stationary brushes X and Y here and the current in the coil A, B, C, D. See here children here the battery is also connected here and plug key is also there when the when you switch on the battery here the current in the coil A, B, C, D here. The current in the coil A, B, C, D enters from the source battery through the conducting brush X. Current always flow from positive terminal to the negative terminal. So here the current in the coil A, B, C, D enters from the source battery through the conducting brush X and flows back to the battery again through brush Y and flows back to the battery again through the brush Y. Here. See children, the current flows, when you switch on the battery, the current flows through the coil A, B, C, D and it again flows through the battery here through the brush Y. Here notice that the current in the arm A, B of the coil flows from A to B here. Notice that the current in the arm A, B, it flows from A to B here and in the, and in the arm CD, it flows from C to D. On applying Fleming's left hand rule, children here, for the direction of the force on a current carrying conductor in a magnetic field. On applying, you will apply now the Fleming's left hand rule for the direction of the force on a current carrying conductor in a magnetic field. We find that the force acting on R may be pushes it downwards. Here children, we will find that the force acting on arm AB pushes it downwards while the force acting on the arm CD pushes it upwards. Here see children, the force will be exerted and the force acting on arm AB, it pushes the arm AB downwards and the force acting on the arm CD, it pushes it upwards. Thus, the coil and the axle O, it is mounted free to turn about an axis. Here children, the coil and the axle, they are mounted free to turn about an axis. They rotate in an anti-clockwise. At half rotation, Q makes contact with the brush X and P with the brush Y. 
P with the brush Y. See here, children. You observe the figure here. When you apply the Fleming's left hand rule for the direction of force on a current carrying conductor in a magnetic field, here we find that the force acting on arm AB, here see children, the force acting on a arm AB, it pushes the arm AB downwards, means it will go down and while the force acting on arm CD, the force acting on a arm CD, it pushes it upwards and now arm CD will go down and sorry arm AB will go down and arm CD will come up here. Thus the coil and the axle see here thus the coil and the axle here mounted free turn about an axis it will mounted free to turn about an axis here the coil and the Axle here, they will turn about an axis. In, they rotate in anti-clockwise direction. See here, children. They rotate in the anti-clockwise direction. At half rotation, when they are rotating in anti-clockwise direction, at half a rotation, Q makes contact with the brush hex. See here, children. When they are rotating in an anti-clockwise direction, this Q makes contact with the brush X here. See here children, when they are rotating in anti-clockwise direction, Q makes contact with the, this Q makes contact with the brush X and P with the brush Y. This P with the brush Y. Q makes contact with the brush X and P makes contact with the brush Y. Therefore, the current in the coil, it gets reversed. See here children, when it is rotating in an anti-clockwise direction, Q it comes with the contact with the brush X here and P comes with the contact with the brush Y and therefore the current in the coil, it gets reversed. Since it is rotating in anti-clockwise direction, it, the current in the coil gets reversed and it flows along the path DCBA and it flows along the path DCPA. Like this, children, it will flow along the DC BA. Coil flows along the direction DC BA. And a device that reverses the direction of the flow of current. See, children, a device that reverses the direction of the flow of current through a circuit, it is called a commutator. A device that reverses the direction of the flow of current through the circuit, it is called a commutator. See here children, here commutator, these are the split rings are the commutator here children. In the motor, the split rings, these are the commutators because here these split rings, they reverses the direction of the flow of current. First the current was flowing from direction A, B, C, D here and then when it turns in anti-clockwise direction, it flows from DC, BA. Therefore, the split rings, they reverse the direction of the flow of current through the circuit. Therefore, here, the, the devices that reverses the direction of flow of current through a circuit, it is called as a commutator. And in electric motor, the split rings acts as a commutator. The split rings acts as commutator. See, actually it is given here in electric motor, the split rings acts as a commutator and the reversal of the current also reverses the direction of force acting on the arms A, B, C, D, A, B and C, D. See here children. The split rings acts as a commutator and the reversal, the re when the current reverses, the reversal of the current, it also reverses the direction of the force. When the current reverses, the direction of force also it will be reversed acting on the two arms AB and CD. Thus, the arm AB of the coil that was earlier pushed down. Thus, the arm 
AB of the coil that was pushed down is now pushed up here. See here, children. When the current reverses the direction of force also, it will be reversed on the arm AB and CD. Thus, the arm AB of the coil that was earlier pushed down. It was earlier pushed down. It is now pushed up. And the arm CD, it was previously pushed up. It is now pushed down. Therefore, the coil and the axle rotate half a turn more in the same direction. See here, children. Because, because of the uh, when the current reverses, the direction of the force also reversed on the arm AB and CD. Here, thus, the arm AB of the coil that was earlier pushed down. Again, you observe the figure here, children. The, the arm of the coil AB that was earlier pushed down here. This was earlier pushed down. Then it will go up and CD which was pushed up. It will go down. And therefore the coil and the axle rotate half a turn. Therefore here the coil and the, this axle will rotate half a turn here. More in the same direction again. The coil and the axle it will again rotate half a turn more in the same direction and the reversing of the current is repeated at each half rotation. See here children this is, is the reversing of the current it is repeated at each half rotation giving rise to a continuous rotation of the coil and the axle here. See here here children here first See here children, first when we apply Fleming's left hand rule here, the arm AB it is pushed downwards and arm CD it is pushed upwards. Now when the current is reversed, the direction of the force will also be reversed and this arm AB will come up now and this CD will, arm CD will go down and the reversing of the current and it is repeated and at each half rotation giving rise to a continuous rotation of the coil. This, this uh, reversing of the current children, this is repeated at each half rotation means uh, for every half rotation, the reversing of the current is repeated giving rise to a continuous rotation of the, it gives to continuous rotation of the coil and the axle here. The coil and the axle, they are continuously rotated giving rise to a continuous rotation of the coil and the axle here and this is how the motor works here therefore the motor rotates now and the reversing of the current is repeated at each half rotation giving rise to a continuous rotation of the coil and to the axle and this commercial motors, these are used and elect, as an electromagnet in place of a permanent magnet. See here, children, these commercial motors, these are used as an electromagnet in place of a permanent magnet. And a large number of turns of a conducting wire in the current carrying coil. A soft iron core on which the coil is wound. The soft iron core on which the coil is zone plus the coils. It is called as a armature and this enhances the power of the motor. This enhances the power of the motor. See here children, the commercial motors, these are used as an electromagnet. This is this commercial motor. So this will use an electro magnet in place of a permanent magnet. Commercial motor means children here. To make the motor more powerful, we modify the construction of the motor. They are known as the commercial motors. These commercial motors, they will use the electromagnet in place of a permanent magnet and large number of turns of the conducting wire in the 
current carrying coil and here a soft iron core on which the coil is wound here a soft iron core is is used on which the coil is wound here and the soft iron core on which the coil is wound plus the coil so we call it as an armature and this enhances the power of the motor this enhances the power of the motor see you children till now we studied about the construction of the motor and also how it works you read this children and you practice the diagram also next concepts we will continue in our next class thank you